Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nick. I'm uh, somebody who's been working in technology in one form or another since uh, the very late 90s. So uh, I've been doing this for, for quite a while and got a good amount of experience in the IT and technology sector. Uh, I lecture all over the place. Uh, I've given talks at Microsoft and Apple and NASA and you know a whole bunch of different places. And on this channel, um, I'm trying to give some of the lessons that I've learned over the years to people that are either new to technology or who are, you know, in the tech field already. And, you know, just try to find some things that are useful and hopefully interesting to you. So if you're new to the channel, that's what this is about. And in this particular video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about a book called The Phoenix Project. So the Phoenix Project is a uh, it's a really good book. First off, uh, it's one that I, I found to be pretty enjoyable. Uh, it took me two times to read it. So the first time I read it, I found it a little bit dry, which is something that that is fairly common, uh, I think, when I go look at um, a lot of the sort of classic technology books. And we're going to talk about a few of them uh, on this channel. And this is going to be the the first one of those. So I just pulled up uh you know my main display. You can go ahead and see that the the Phoenix Project is listed out here. Um, if I scroll down a little bit, uh, there's a couple other books. Uh, the Phoenix Project by M.R. Pritchard and D.M. Kane. Uh, these are not the ones I'm talking about. Right? <laughs> so the one that looks like it's about Nazis uh, and the one that looks like it's some weird fantasy sci-fi romance thingy. Neither of those, right? If you want to check them out, by all means, go go do that. That's, you know, maybe that's up your alley. Uh, but what we're talking about is this one right here, which is the Phoenix Project. Uh, a novel uh, about IT DevOps uh, and helping your your business win, right? Um, so despite the little smarmy <laughs> uh, subtitle, um, it's actually a, a very good book. And it's it's one that I think you should read for uh, a couple different reasons. Um, so the, the first one is, is whether or not you agree with the DevOps, DevOps methodologies. It's a major changes happen to the IT industry, right? And it's um, probably going to be here to stay. So I think that if you don't like the way that <laughs> things are looking with, with DevOps, um, you know, it's tough, sorry. Um, but the not the whole sector is going to be, you know, DevOps shops. Uh, you're going to have plenty of, especially I think, smaller environments, you know, if you're like a, like a law firm or, or something like that, um, where you'll have, your more traditional IT department with a help desk and, and things like that. Um, so, right, whether or not you agree with the DevOps philosophies, um, it's good to know what the big things in your industry are. And this is a big one. If you were a developer and you don't know the ideas behind like agile software development and like cascade software development, and, you know, even if the whole industry is moving to, you know, Agile as, as happened, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years ago. Um, and you disagree and you think that, you know, more cascade top down where it's, it's architected in advance kind of approaches is better. That's fine. But you should, you should know what the, the other side is arguing and what they, what they like. Uh, for example, um, you know, I don't consider myself primarily a, a programmer, but I, I've certainly done software development and programming in, in the past. And um, one of my preferences is I lean much more towards procedural uh, or functional programming compared to object-oriented programming. I can do object-oriented, I'll you know, do plenty of stuff in C-sharp, and uh, I learned Java at one point, even though at this point I, I basically don't remember any Java. It would, <laughs> it would probably take me uh, as long to get it kind of back up to speed with Java as it would uh, for someone to, to learn it from scratch, assuming they knew other languages. Um, but I always lean more towards procedural and functional programming. And it's interesting to see the industry is sort of coming back around a little bit uh, and moving away from object-oriented. But it's nice to know the arguments, right? So uh, despite the fact that most of the guys in the object-oriented side of the, the world no longer are espousing things like polymorphism and, and those kind of you know um, benefits to, to object-oriented programming and all that kind of stuff, it's still good to know what they are because I mean, the honest fact is, is 
if you're going to be doing anything at a fairly high level for a long time, and I think that's what everybody hopes, is that you'll be doing it well enough to be at a fairly high level and your career will last a reasonable amount of time, I hope, right? Um, you're going to make some wrong bets. Everybody does, you know? You're going to go pick the wrong thing. It happens occasionally. So knowing what the other argument is, well, lets you, you know, come around and see your mistakes when you're wrong and, and, you know, also sort of have respect for the people that you're, you know, arguing with or are the other side of a camp. You know, it's a, it's a healthy thing to go do. So whether or not you decide that you're on board with the ideas um, in DevOps, it's good to know what they are. And I think the Phoenix Project lays them out in a very digestible way, right? So as I mentioned before, it was a little bit dry. Um, I think that's, you know, not uncommon when you're when you're looking at books that are about technology stuff and um, you know the, the the methodologies in which we approach things and stuff like that. So one of the things that I find for myself personally is with books like this, audiobook is the way to go, right? So uh, I I read the Phoenix Project initially, and you know in ebook form. Um, you know I've got a uh, a Kobo reader, sort of like a Kindle. And, uh, you know, got through the first couple chapters on there. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. But I was, I was really not, you know, going through it very quickly the, the, the first time I tried to go read it. And it took, you know, listening to an audiobook about, I think, maybe, I'm trying to remember when I first read it, maybe a year or two after that, something like that. Um, so, yeah, when I listened to an audiobook, it was, it was much easier for me to get through. Um, I, I tend to listen to a lot of audiobooks anyway because I take my dog for walks and it's, it's something they do on the walks. So it's really good for that, right? You can understand what actually is DevOps, what are the philosophies that they're espousing, why are they doing this? It also, I think, is very useful because it helps you understand the business case for this um, so that you can talk about these philosophies and ideas with management folks, whether that's management folks that you would be reporting to in your department or people that you're gonna be working with in other departments, so that's that's really handy. So that's, that's a good thing. You, you can kind of get that idea. The second reason, and I think this is, a, this is equally useful, right? So again, this is regardless of whether you decide that you agree with these philosophies or not, right? I think the first quarter or half of the book does a really, really good job at showing what one of the most common types of unhealthy IT organization looks like. You get in this weird cycle uh, where you're getting behind and then the firefighting that it takes to sort of fix things causes you to get more behind and it's just sort of this cascade, this snowball effect that ends up happening. It also sort of shows you, you know, pretty common problems that are almost kind of like tropes within IT. You know, like one of the, one of the classic things that, that people will do sometimes in IT and, uh, and I say this with love because I, I did a lot of security work back in the day, uh, is if you want to kill a project, you bring in security. Right? <laughs> so if you're an ops and, and like someone's trying to push something, they're, they're trying to ram you know, this down the pipeline uh, and, and railroad you into implementing something that you're not comfortable with, you pull in the security team because that's just going to you know, kill the project for like a month. Um, and you, know, you get to see those kind of things and, um, and I find it to be a really, really good idea, especially for those of you guys who are a little bit newer to working in technology. Um, if you're somebody who's coming back out of school, perhaps, if you're somebody who's re-careering, these are really good things to look for. Because when you go interview, when you start looking for jobs and you're interviewing in a company, it's really important to remember that you're not just being interviewed you're also interviewing them. So by seeing an example of an unhealthy IT organization and the way that they you know, prioritize things and stuff like that, you can then ask informed questions during your interview because it's really important to remember that. You're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. Not every job is a good fit for you specifically, right? 
you might be somebody who does very well with a particular kind of manager. It's a good idea to, you know, um, figure out who that's going to be. I remember about, I don't know, six or seven years ago, I did, you know, a, a full bank of interviews uh, at Google and um, ended up sort of mutually deciding that it wasn't a good fit because they wouldn't tell me who my manager was. And I know that having a, uh, a manager that I'm on the same page with is really, really important to me. Um, so it was one of those things where it's like, I can't, <laughs> I can't take a job if I don't know who I'm going to work for. Uh, and if any of you guys end up working at Google or, or work there already, you, you know, they basically decide what team or department to put you in and they might move you three months later. Um, it's just, you work for the company and the company figures that stuff out. Um, you know, you don't work for a particular manager or have a, a sort of specific role. That role may change. And, you know, that's, um, you know, they're very open about it. Um, they, they weren't, you know, hiding that fact or anything like that. But uh, for some people, that's, that's not really what they're looking for. For other people, it's like, hey, I'm getting a lot of great perks. I'm making a lot of money. This is a, this is a great thing for me. Uh, for me, it, it wasn't. Um, but anyway, you're going to be able to interview them and have ideas about what a bad environment might look like. It's not the only form of bad environment, but it's certainly one of them. And it's a pretty common one. I've seen environments like that in the past. I've experienced having a development team, uh, you know, quote unquote, throw things over the wall as they describe uh, in the book at the very last minute where we end up in operations having to fight fires and things like that. And, you know, I was very fortunate where I worked at a lot of startups where a lot of the philosophies of having development and operations integrated were just kind of something that you had to do because there was you know, a very small number of people. Uh, so you, you couldn't have a separate IT organization and a separate development organization. You kind of all had to do parts of the same thing. So it, a lot of the philosophies and stuff that they espouse um, you know, are, are things that you see in small companies. Um, so it's, it's, you know, uh, it's useful to go look at that. So my recommendation to you, uh, is to, to go, uh, get a copy of the Phoenix project, preferably on audiobook, uh, and give it a listen. So that, that'll be your homework for the next, uh, next couple of weeks. <laughs> no grades, uh, but that'll be your, your homework assignment for the next couple of weeks. Um, if you are, are not aware of it already, um, a lot of libraries have gone completely digital. Uh, I know I live in Los Angeles and then we're really fortunate to have the LA public library system and they're phenomenal. Uh, they have, uh, uh overdrive at Livy and all these kind of great things where you can actually get audiobooks, download them right to your phone uh, or your computer and listen to them that way without having to pay for anything. Um, if you would prefer to get it through, through audible personally, I have a subscription. I think they're great. Uh, if I had my stuff a little bit more together, I probably would have signed up for their program where you can get them to sponsor, you know, podcasts or, or you know, YouTube channels or things like that. Um, or, you know, at least gotten an, an Amazon affiliate link. But, you know, that's, that's not really what this, what this channel is about. Um, so, yeah, check that out. I think it's a really cool thing. Um, I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's a good book. You know, it's, it's, um, there's some stuff that I, that I agree with. There's some stuff that I disagree with. Uh, in general, uh, I'm on board with the idea of, of DevOps. Um, I do have some little quibbles with it, but generally I, I think as a, as a overarching sort of philosophy of, of integrating dev and ops and having rapid release cycles and things like that, you know, is, is, is good. Um, so check it out, get to know all about, you know, the three ways and, <laughs> all the good stuff that makes up the, the DevOps philosophy. And then, um, you know, once you understand what that is, that's a keyword you can put on your resume, right? Um, it's also going to sort of give you an outline of some of the different technologies that, that you can come up and, and, and look at. So that's um, your first sort of homework assignment for, for reading. Uh, we'll have more of these uh, to come down the, the pipeline, some recommended books, uh, some of the classics of, uh, IT technology literature. Some of them will be, will be geared uh, like this to uh, DevOps. Some of them will be, be geared towards uh, software development. 
And even if you're somebody more on the IT side of the, the house, it's still good to know about software development philosophies. It can be really, really useful, in fact. Um, sometimes you can, because you're on the outside, if you're in sort of a classic ops role, see problems in a, in a, a project that maybe the people on the inside won't be able to. Um, but, you know, if you've read, you know, classics like the myth, you know, Mythical Man Month and all that kind of stuff, you know, those will be really useful. So we'll look at some of those uh, as we come down the, the, the pipeline. So hopefully this will be something that will be interesting to you. Um, hope you guys all check it out. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. If any of you guys have already read The Phoenix Project, uh, I'd love to uh, to hear your reactions to it in the, in the comments down below. Uh, additionally, any suggestions uh, for books that you found to be particularly useful uh, in terms of books about technology. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thanks again for watching another video. Uh, I was told by a YouTube expert, and I don't know if this is true, but if you click down here below to subscribe, not only will you be able to watch more of my videos where I talk about IT career stuff, uh, but it will also cure racism. Like, that's, that's all it took. I had no idea. Click the subscribe button, unless, you know, you love racism. I hope you don't. So probably should click the subscribe thing.